Lot of O-level students put in the best performance in at least two decades. 83.8% of students who sat for the exams last year passed five or more subjects. It was an anxious moment for Ron Lowe of Greendale Secondary School as he received his O-level results. He already had a conditional offer in Nanyang Polytechnic's Diploma in Sports and Wellness Management under the direct Polytechnic Admission Exercise. But the 16-year-old, who was from the Express Stream, wanted to prove a point, that he can be good at both studies and fencing. Ron picked up the sport in Secondary 1 and has represented Singapore at national and international competitions. But his academic performance began to falter. In Secondary 3, Ron failed three subjects. I found it more difficult to cope with the more subjects uh, because Sec 3 uh, is, uh, I would say, vastly different from Sec 2. So uh, coping between uh, multiple subjects uh, and especially fencing, along with some student council work, I also uh, I would, I had uh, a lot of trouble and difficulty uh, during that time period. So his teachers stepped in to help. They provided me with additional work before I left. And uh, after I came back, uh, they would seek me for one-on-one -on -one consultations uh, and help me buck out on what I had missed out during that time period that I was gone for. Ron scored mostly Bs in his O-level exams to secure a place in his course. He is one of over 29,700 students from mainstream secondary schools who sat for the O-level examination last year. 83.8% of them managed to pass five or more subjects, beating the 83.3% mark set in 2014. It was the best performance in two decades, stretching back to 1995. Meanwhile, the proportion of secondary four normal academic students who obtained at least one O-level pass also went up to 88.6%. Similarly, private candidates from the class in T15 performed better compared to the previous batch. Over 1,900 of them sat for the examination and 90.5% passed at least one subject. The Education Ministry said students can refer to its online portal www.ecareers.sg to receive up-to-date information on education options and career pathways. Academically is not the only priority for secondary schools. They're putting in place more programs to take care of other needs, such as those of students with physical disabilities or behavioural issues. 16-year-old Tio Li Mei has a speech disorder and mild physical impairment following a brain infection when she was in primary six. Her transition to Greendale Secondary School was not easy, but she had the support of teachers like Miss Kerry Lim. You saw how she went about with her things and she doesn't really show that she needs any sympathy, any form of sympathy at all. You are just really heartened. Miss Lim is one of the school's four yearheads who oversee the holistic development of students. How yearheads operate varies in different schools. At Greendale Secondary School, a yearhead who oversees the entire batch of Secondary 1 students also supervises them when they move on to Secondary 2. The school said this is part of efforts to forge a stronger relationship between teachers and students. Such support also helped Li Mei to cope academically. The normal academic student did well enough in her N-level examinations to pursue her studies at an Institute of Technical Education. Greendale has also implemented other programs, like introducing art therapy to help students with behavioural issues. It's actually through our counsellor who brought up this point, uh, that um, art therapy is a form uh, that can help the students express their emotions, their anger or some of their concerns.